Welcome back. Before we continue with absolute value, I just want to take a minute to go over how to graph absolute value using the transformational approach. So for an instance, I have y equals absolute value of x minus 2 plus 3, and I want to graph that without using Desmos. I want to do it by hand and without plotting points. So really, all you have to do first is identify the transformations. So for example, I have minus 2 on the inside, and so a minus 2 on the inside means right 2, and then I have a plus 3 on the outside, and a plus 3 on the outside means up 3. So my transformations of the parent function are right 2 and up 3. So now all we do is simply move that vertex right 2 and up 3. So I'm going to go right 2, and then I'm going to go up 3. And so my new graph, the graph of y equals the absolute value of x minus 2 plus 3, is going to be right there. And you can confirm this by graphing the absolute value of x minus 2 plus 3 on Desmos and making sure it matches what you just graphed. Really, what we're doing is we're literally transforming the parent graph by moving it right to and then up 3, and all the points on that graph move the same amount. Let's look at another one. So I have the absolute value of x plus 4 minus 5. Again, you just start off by identifying the transformations. So I have a plus 4 on the inside, so that's going to be a left 4, because again, on the inside it's the opposite of what you think. And then I have a minus 5 on the outside, so that's going to be down 5. So I take my vertex, and I'm going to go left 4, and then I'm going to go down 5, and then that's all the transformations, so my graph would be right there. And again, what I'm doing by this is I'm taking that parent function, and I'm literally moving it left 4, all of the points, and I'm moving it down 5 in order to get the graph of my new function. Let's look at another one. So in this one, I have the negative absolute value of x plus 1 minus 1. So as I identify these, the plus 1 on the inside means I'm going to move left 1. The minus 1 on the outside means I'm going to go down 1. And then the negative in front means I'm going to flip it. So then right away what I can do is I can flip this. I start at my vertex and I can flip it. So that's what my graph is going to look like after I flip it. And now I'm going to move left 1 and down 1. And so my new function is going to go right there. Again, it's like taking that entire function and flip it. And then I move left 1 and down 1, and there's my new function. On this one, I have 3 times the absolute value of x minus 4 plus 1. So again, going through my transformations, I have a minus 4 on the inside, which means right 4. I have a plus 1 on the outside, which means up 1. And then on this one, I have a size change. This is a stretch because it's bigger than 1. I have a size change or a stretch of 3. So just like on the last example where we handled the inversion first, we're going to do the stretch first. And what I'm going to do is multiply all my y values by 3. And you only need to get a couple of those. So for example, right here, my y value is 1. So 1 times 3 is 3. Right here, my y value is 2, so 2 times 3 is 6. If I go here, my y value is 3, but 3 times 3 is 9. I'm off the graph already. So then go the other way. I have a 1, so 1 times 3 is 3. Right here, I have a y value of 2, so 2 times 3 is 6. And so here's the graph of my function with a stretch of 3. But now I have to move it right 4 and up 1. So I'm going to go ahead and move it right 4 and up 1. And so my new function is going to look like this. And that's all there is to graphing absolute value using transformations. Identify the transformations first and then manipulate the graph accordingly.